I want to describe to you some of the symptoms that would lead you to believe that you're suffering a loss of hearing. One of the first things is you may get a ringing sound in your ear. That ringing sound is the sound of your hands ringing together, wishing you could go out and play in the world. Or maybe it's a buzzing noise. And that buzzing is the fly of the enemy telling in your ears you'd have so much more fun if you would just go out into the world. These kind of things will lead you to a total loss of hearing. And that is the loss of hearing your father. These are the kind of temptations that lead us away from the Father and create distance. And after a while, we start to wonder, is anybody listening to me? In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, so faith comes by hearing. You know, you either have a lack of faith by this time or sometimes you've lost your faith. And that's because you've become separated from the Father. And it has created this hearing problem. And the verse continues, and hearing is initiated and comes by the word of God. You see, a long time away from the Father will damage your hearing. Isaiah 55, 3, it says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I'll make an everlasting covenant with you. In Hebrews 5, 11, it says, it would love to share with you God's everlasting covenant, but because you're dull of hearing, I can't tell you these things. God has a lot to say to you about this life and the life to come. But when you create distance between you and him, your hearing becomes dull and he simply stops talking to you. God in the previous verse has a solution to get you out of this condition. It says two things you need to do. One is you have to incline your ear. You need to turn your ear in the Father's direction. Number two, he says, come to me. You need to get up and walk towards him. You need to come to him because it was you that created the distance that lost your hearing. In Isaiah 59.1, it reads, God's hands are not shortened that he cannot save you. He says he can still reach you. But you may say, then, why doesn't he save me? And the verse continues, his ears are not heavy that he cannot hear you. But then you say, well, why isn't he listening to me? Now, God is going to give you the reason in verse 2. He says, your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins hid his face from you. He will not hear you. Wow. Not only will he not hear you, but the verse says he can't even look at you because of the sin you live in. You know, you're saying the wrong things to God, and you're not giving God what he wants from you. In Jeremiah 8, 6, it says, I listened and I heard, but they did not speak right to me. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to their own course. Now imagine this, the prodigal son sitting in the pig pen, throwing his hands up in the air, saying, What have I done wrong? And in verse 5 of this same chapter, God has a word for this. It says, They have slidden back by a perpetual backsliding. They hold back the seat and they refuse to return. You know, at this point, the ringing in your ears have reached full-blown loss of hearing. God says they hold back their sin and they refuse to return home. You know, there is a man that's described in Psalms that found he lost his hearing and it tells you what he did to hear God again. In Psalms 38, 13, it reads, But I, as a deaf man, heard nothing. And as a dumb man, I didn't say anything. And in verse 15, it reads, But I hope, O Lord, that you will hear me. In 16, For I have asked God to hear me, 
or else they will rejoice over me while my foot slips, and they're becoming bold against me. And in verse 17, For I am ready to stop, because my sorrow is continually in front of me. And in verse 18, For I will declare my iniquities, I will be sorry for my sin. Man, this guy took the right road. He gets towards the end and says, I'm ready to stop. I'm tired of being sorry. And I want to finally be sorry for my sins. This is the road that was needed to be taken by this man. And this is the road that you need to take. Remember in the verse in Jeremiah 8, 6, God said, I heard them, but they were saying the wrong things. Like, what have I done? And also no man repented of his wickedness. Now that was God's complaint. This person in Psalms did it right. You know, when you walk away from the Father, let's be honest. You're not on a missionary trip to try to save the pigs. Because you can't do that without him. But he does know what you're doing. In Isaiah 55, 2, it says, You spend your money for that which is not bread. And in John 6, 48, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. And the verse continues, you labor for things that do not satisfy. If you listen, God tells you how to do better. First, he says, you need to change your diet. You need the bread of life. You need my son. Remember, you are what you eat. And the verse ends by saying, eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself. God is saying, I'll tell you what will delight you. Stop laboring for vain things. Come home and eat, and your soul will be delighted. You know, at the end of every study, I say something to you that's important to me. It says, this is food that I've provided to my family for years. I now want to provide this food for you. Once you receive this food I've provided for you, it will strengthen you. And with that strength, you will need to take the next step. In James 1.22, it says, But be you doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. And it continues in verse 23, For any man that is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man seeing his face in the mirror. He looks at himself, and then goes away, forgetting the condition that he's in. Once you regain your hearing by the word, you need to take a good look at the condition that you're in and then do something about it. And that something is repent. When you do, two things will happen at the same time. You will recognize the father's voice. And the second is your father will hear you. This is food that I've provided to my family for years. I now want to provide it to you. I hope you'll share it with a friend. If you like it, I will provide more. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.